Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Logan, and today we're going to be doing something a little different than what we usually do here in our channel. Rather than taking a look at a piece of home theater gear, we're going to be reviewing the Topping E30 Stereo DAC, which was graciously sent to us for review by Apos Audio right after the intro. Alright, so as I mentioned, this is a Topping E30 Stereo DAC, which takes the digital audio signal from something like your computer, CD transport, or Blu-ray player, and turns it into an analog signal, which can be fed into something like an amplifier or a pair of powered speakers. Now, in most cases, if you have a halfway modern AVR, it should have its very own DAC built right in. But usually, they don't sound super great, especially not for critical listening, or they don't have the features you need, like DSD playback, right out of the box. Or maybe you just want to use a high-end pair of headphones, without being limited to the onboard audio built into your motherboard or phone. That's exactly where something like this comes in. The E30 can be used with any PC, and that's Windows, Mac, or Linux, Toslink, or even coaxial source you might want to use. But before we continue, I want to mention Apos Audio, who actually sent us this DAC for review. Apos Audio is an online retailer of audio gear like headphones, DACs, and custom cables, and basically their goal is to offer a white glove service without having to walk into a physical store, and they strive to provide excellent customer service. They even provide a free extended two-year manufacturer's warranty on all of their products. To learn more, head on over to their website at apost.audio. Link is in the description. Now, like I said, Apost Audio was generous enough to send over this topping E30 review unit for us to take a look at, and we really do appreciate it. But everything we say here in this review is our honest opinion of the product. And no one from Apost nor Topping got to see this video before it was published to YouTube. With that out of the way, Let's see what kind of a DAC you can get for just $130. Inside the box, you'll find the Topping E30 instruction manual, along with a quick brochure showcasing many of Topping's other products, power and data USB cables, an IR remote control, and finally, the DAC itself. And speaking of the DAC, it looks really nice. Ours is in black, but APOS does have a silver option as well. From the front, the only thing you'll see is the orange LED display, and a single capacitive button for powering on the DAC and changing inputs. This just makes the whole thing look super clean in my opinion. Around the back is where you'll find all of your inputs and outputs. This is a stereo DAC, so you'll get analog left and right outputs, along with coaxial and toslink digital inputs, a USB port for using this as a sound card on pretty much any sort of computer you can think of, and a center positive 5 volt barrel jack, so you can power the DAC with the included USB adapter cable using a phone charger, a USB port on your computer, or even a suitable linear power supply like the Topping P50. Hooking up the Topping E30 is also really easy. For my setup, which is a two-channel stereo featuring a Yamaha RX570 stereo receiver, a Yamaha CDX480 CD player, and a Sony UBPX800 4K Blu-ray player, paired with a really good set of acoustic profiles, PSL 88.6 floor standing speakers. All I have to do is connect the power from a USB phone charger into the DAC, connect the stereo RCA cables from my receiver into the DAC, and finally, connect the Sony's coaxial output into the E30's coaxial input. Once I fired this thing up, the first thing I noticed while listening to music was just how open and airy the sound was. Another thing that really surprised me was just how good the bass response was. It seemed really tight and fast with a lot of impact and clarity. And where I think this DAC really shines is in the mid-range. The soundstage seemed very wide and the vocals sounded very forward and smooth. Now if you want to see a playlist with some of the tracks we used to demo this DAC, go ahead and click the card right up here. All of the material we used in our listening was either from a CD or Super Audio CD and we also tried streaming CD rips, all with a very impressive sound quality. Now, the remote the topping includes with the E30 is actually pretty nice. Even though it has an all plastic construction, it feels pretty solid, and personally, I really like the way that it looks. You get some really basic buttons, like volume up or down, mute, or input switching. I also discovered that this DAC actually has six separate filter modes that can switch through with the remote. And essentially what these do is allow you to change where the chip inside rolls off the ultrasonic frequencies above 22 kHz in your music. 
Now personally, I didn't notice much of a difference between any of these modes, but I'm sure if you had a better setup, and especially a pair of super tweeters that could reproduce those ultra high frequencies, you'd be able to take proper advantage of these filters. In the end, I really enjoyed the sound of this DAC and my pretty mid-range listening setup, but I wanted to see how it performed paired with a really good set of speakers and amps. So we went up into our home theater. These Vandersteen 2CE signatures are pretty much built for perfect reproduction of any music source you can throw at them, and the Emotiva UPA1 monoblocks powering them are no slouches either. We're also using a very similar Sony UBP X800 4K Blu-ray player as a source, and just for the sake of comparison, we decided to try using the DAC built into our Integra DTC 9.8 processor, which cost about $2,000 when it was new. Now, obviously, the DAC built into the Integra sounded great, but what really impressed me was just how well this little $130 DAC stood up to the built-in DAC on the Integra. Things sounded very similar, and in some cases, the E30 actually performed better to my ears. But up until now, we've just been looking at the E30's performance as a DAC over coaxial and Toslink inputs. But the really cool thing about the topping E30 is the built-in USB chip. And this actually adds support for playing anything up to DSD 512 or 32-bit PCM at 768kHz straight over USB. The only downside here is that you'll have to use two USB ports. One for powering the DAC and one for sending a signal to the DAC but I think it's well worth it, and honestly, this isn't a problem at all if you have a powered USB hub. And first impressions were pretty positive. The topping E30 performed just as well, if not better, over USB. This thing would absolutely kill for a desktop speaker or headphone setup. And speaking of which, the topping E30 also has a built-in preamp, which you can enable or disable by holding the power button on the front of the DAC. Now this is awesome for anyone who wants to use the E30 with a pair of powered bookshelf speakers, or even a headphone amp that doesn't have its own volume control built in. To my ears, it sounded just as good as the direct DAC mode, so it really is a nice addition. Anyway, one of the things that the E30 is really sensitive with is the power source. Unfortunately, I didn't have a proper linear power supply to power the E30 with for this review, but if you do decide to get one of these DACs for yourself, you need to make sure you power it properly. The DAC definitely didn't sound as good powered by my computer as it did with a high quality switching USB phone charger and I'm absolutely sure it would sound even better with a linear power supply, but either way, this thing was still very impressive even without a great power source. Now if you want a perfect experience, you can also power this with a battery bank and you can even take it with you on the go, but personally I think the topping E30 deserves a place on your desk next to a great stereo amplifier or headphone amp. This DAC is built really well, has an amazing amount of I.O., except for Bluetooth, but honestly, I can forgive that, as Topping already makes their own solutions for wireless music streaming, like the MX3. But anyway, the E30 is seriously a great product at only 130 bucks, and I've really enjoyed getting to hear how it sounds. You know, I wish I had more to say about it, but honestly, I feel like that sums it up really well. I can't say much more, other than the fact that it's a great product, and honestly, it blows my mind. Topping could offer all of this at such a low price point. If you're looking for a versatile DAC at a very reasonable price point, definitely make sure you consider the Topping E30. And if you really love music and hi-fi, and you want to see more reviews like this, let us know. Because this was a really exciting review, and I'm glad that I had the opportunity to do it. I want to give a huge thanks again to Apos Audio for sending this DAC over for review, and that about wraps up the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know if you have any questions or comments about the Topping E30 or anything else Apos Audio sells in their online store down below. And don't forget to check them out at apos.audio. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, have an awesome day.